Hey Venom Squad, I got my dancing shoes on today. Today we're pulling out the largest species of Bushmaster there is. The one that actually reaches 12 foot. So don't go nowhere, you ain't gonna wanna miss it. Hey Venom Squad, I've been getting some responses, people asking more about Bushmasters, wanting to see more Bushmasters. Well, you know, we have a couple different species of Bushmaster here at Venom Central, and today I want to pull out the species that actually gets to be the longest. The true third largest snake in the world, largest venomous snake in the world, is the Lachesis muda. Now there's a couple different subspecies recognized with Lachesis muda, and they get big. I mean, a 10-footer is can be normal. I mean, the one I'm going to pull out and show you guys, we haven't got a true measurement on it, but it's a big son of a bitch. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's easily eight foot. And uh, now, with the Muda being more of a, it's, it's more of a docile snake. It, it, it's not quite as volatile as the Melanosophila, which is the Blackhead Bushmaster, or the Stenophrys, which is the Central American Bushmaster. But, but these guys still are, it's still a deadly animal. It's still a very dangerous animal. And I can't tabletop him. He's way too long. He's way too wiry. So I'm going to have to hook him and move him around gently with trying to keep part of him on the floor so he doesn't trip out on me. But it's a cool snake. This one's gorgeous. But Muda is known for they get the length. They don't get the heavy body that the Melanosophila gets or the, or the Stenophrys you get. They, they're long long, lean, muscular snakes, and this one is, is quite a specimen, and we're planning on breeding these mudas this year, too, but let me tell you, this one is a dynamo, it's a beautiful animal, you're going to enjoy seeing it, and I don't get to pull them out too much, but today we had them out, we cleaned his exhibit out, so we brought them in the main room, so we can video them for y'all, and show you guys another species of Bushmaster, now, the couple species that are recognized with the muda, you know, the Lachesis muda, and then the Lachesis muda rambiata, which is the Atlantic Forest Bushmaster. We're going to pull this guy out, let you get a good look at him. I'm going to tell you a few little things about Bushmasters that you probably don't realize. Here's a good tidbit. The Lachesis muda, of course, Lachesis. It's one of the Greek goddesses that determines your fate or the threat of your life. But muda, it translates into dumb. Or deaf. It's because down there they call this the rattless rattlesnake. So when it's shaking its tail, it's not making a noise. So they're calling it dumb, which translates into mute or deaf. It doesn't make a sound. So that's where they got the mute sound from, the muda. So pretty interesting how they name snakes. But with none to do, we're going to pull this monster out. Let's get a look at him. Now you can see. This guy isn't built quite like the other Bushmasters. He's long and he's lean. Now, I don't like to lift him up off the ground too much, but just so you can get an idea of just how big this snake is. But we're going to let him on the ground so he doesn't lose his cool. I don't like to lift him up too much and move him around that much. They don't like leaving the ground. But as long as he's got one part of his body on the ground, he feels okay. Now. Oddly enough, this snake is blamed for more bites than it's actually responsible for. This snake is, 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 off, is often accused of most of the snake bites that happen in South America. Because the natives down there, they actually are, everything they get bit by is a Bushmaster. So it gets confused a lot with a lot of the Bothrop species and a lot of other things. So this snake is literally not the monster that, that it's made out to be. He's actually... A pretty docile animal. But nonetheless, we're going to give him the respect he deserves. We're not going to take too many liberties with this guy, even though he is, he's basically a big puppy, but he still holds the capability to light you up and end your life. So <laughs> we're going to give him his respect that he deserves. But now, moods can be kind of variable. I've seen them with beautiful bright yellow with jet black chevrons on them. They can be really variable. And the, uh, the Atlantic Coast Bushmasters, the, uh, the Atlantic Forest variety, the Rambiata, can really be beautiful. I mean, I think they're all beautiful. 
And this guy, he's actually one of my favorite Bushmasters because he's got an appetite and he's got a feeding response like you would not believe. But moving him around and working with him is actually pretty simple because he's just really chill compared to some of the other species. But this is the Bushmaster that can reach incredible lengths. This guy can get, now the record's 12 foot, but this guy has the capability of, I mean, he may end up being a 10 footer. And right now we're thinking he's probably pushing eight, maybe seven. We haven't got a true measurement on him. I mean, I'm almost six foot and I know he's a lot longer than me. I mean, this is an eight foot carpet that he's on and he can damn near touch both sides of it. So to get a true measurement on him and we'll find out, but what a beautiful animal. What a very misunderstood animal, but that is the epitome of pit viper right there. Third largest venomous snake in the world and definitely one of the most dangerous snakes in the world. And all the folklore, folklore, I'm sorry, you hear about them chasing people down and as a lot of that's baloney, I believe. I've worked with enough of this species, enough Muda, Sinopris, and Melanosophila. I've never had one chase me. I've never had one come deliberately after me. They've mistaken me for a prey item because they picked up a heat source off my body and kind of bolted at me. But once they realize that I'm not what they thought, they back down. But I think that a lot of the bites that happen are from mistaken identity, are really from mistaken identity. I mean, they just are in an ambush position. Somebody's walking in a forest, a bare spot on their body, same shorts on, and they pick up that heat signature. And what do they do? They take a reading off of it and they think prey at them. And they rush right out and they bite you. And it's just a case of mistaken identity. Because these guys work on heat. These guys work on heat more than anything. They are definitely heat seeking missiles. I mean, their capabilities is far beyond a lot of the other pit vipers when it comes to using his heat sensory pits and using it to locate prey items. They can just tell a fraction of a degree difference. It's amazing. I mean, I've even cooled this hook down, my hands down, everything before I handle Bushmasters. When I'm feeding Bushmasters, I cool my tongs down, everything, so they don't bite the tongs. And I make sure that my rat is at a certain temperature hotter than my hand temperature or my body temperature. It's all a heat game with Bushmasters. And keeping Bushmasters, now this species is really hardy. It tends to do pretty well in captivity. Now this guy here, he's been in captivity for a long time. My partner Matt imported this snake probably 10 years ago. And I'm going to tell you, it's, uh, this guy is a simple guy to take care of. He's hardy. He does well. He doesn't require a bunch of crazy stuff, but his temperature cool and his humidity high, and he does really well. The problem with, 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 with Bushmasters is shedding. Now, Bushmasters shedding is a big problem because if they're kept in improper humidity, what happens is they get a dry shed stuck on them. And when he gets a dry shed stuck on them, and it doesn't get removed properly or quick enough, the emollient between the skins, between the old skin and the new skin, it sits there and it gets infected. So these snakes are real prone to getting pink belly and belly, belly rot. And I call it pink belly, but actually getting scale diseases which eat their scales because of improper shedding. And the thing is, is, is keeping their humidity right. If you keep their humidity right, they'll do just fine. And I've seen some guys that, that will keep these things in smaller units so they can control the humidity better. And they'll say, oh, they're shedding out nice because they're in a smaller uh, rack. And they're, but the thing of it is, is that they, they can turn on you on a dime. <laughs> and see, he's starting to get a little bit antsy on me. So we're not going to take any more liberties with this beast. We're going to put him back and I'm going to talk about shedding and Bushmasters. All right, big boy. One more little big guy. And this guy 
is fresh out of the shed. He just shed yesterday. Let's put him back in his can. Come on, big boy. I know, you don't like being off the ground. Okay, we got that monster back in the can, and my wife is at ease now. She had to take a break and catch a breather. <laughs> she gets really nervous watching this stuff, but... But anyways, what I was talking about is, is the shedding problems with lachesis, and it, it's all got to do with humidity. Humidity is key, but the thing is, is if dry sheds get stuck on them, and if they're not removed in a timely manner, what happens is, you know, when a snake sheds its skin, a snake produces an emollient that, that releases in, on, from its skin, and it kind of separates that old skin from the new one. And, and what happens is if, if, if they're not the proper humidity where, that, where they can release that emollient where, where that, that old skin is pliable enough to come off and it gets stuck in a dry shed, it becomes infectious if it's not removed. And when Bushmaster's having that nice little ridge and that heavily kilted scales, it's not easy. So, I mean, you'll see them, pictures of them in the wild and they have dry shed stuck on them, but they eventually get it off because they're living in their natural environment. But in captivity, keeping them, this can be a freaking problem. But, and missing them doesn't work. If you miss them, you're going to ruin them. Because if they're kept too wet, they get, they get scale disease. If they're kept on wet substrate, they get scale disease. They don't like being misted. It drives them crazy. It stresses them out. And I've seen guys keeping them in, in racks and in smaller units. And let me tell you, yeah, you're going to get a couple nice sheds off them. But what's going to happen is... There's no air transfer. There's not fresh air. Fresh air is important with Bushmasters, especially with Muda, with all of them. But fresh air and humidity, and I'm big on air quality. But if that skin isn't removed in a timely fashion, and it sits there till his next shed cycle, and it doubles up, it gets infected. And then when it, has, it turns septic, and eventually it kills that snake. So humidity is key with keeping Bushmasters. And fresh air. They need fresh air. I like to, I mean, I'll raise Bushmasters in tubs to a certain size, but they're never short tubs. I do them in deep tubs. They need space. They need a lot of space. Bushmasters will roam. That's what they do. They like to roam. They're not necessarily just an ambush hunter. As soon as the lights go out, it gets dark, they're out hunting. I've watched them switch positions in the cages. We keep our big ones in very large cages. Every night they go in there, they'll be in a different spot. They pick their area where they want to hunt for the night. But in the daytime, of course, they're, they're holed up in a hide, which they're probably doing in the wild. They're using the burrows. But if you leave sheds, sheds stuck on them, it's a disaster. If you leave them in a tight little unit with no airflow, yeah, the humidity's up and you get a nice shot off them, but I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. That humidity and that stagnant air, wet paper, substrate, sooner or later, you're going to get belly rot. And then there's no coming back from that. It's really hard to beat. So big cages, tight hides, tall cages. They need height. Believe me, I've seen Bushmasters climb. They can climb like a son of a bitch. They are good climbers. In the Serpentarium, I've seen some of them six, seven foot above the ground in one of the large exhibits up on a rock shelf, way up there. And you're like, where, where did he go? He's way up high. They like to go high. But the thing is, if they can't telescope, I call it periscoping. They literally like to stand up and look around. They're that curious. They're actually a smart snake. And if they can't do that, they keep bumping their heads on the top of a tub they feel restricted and it starts slowly stressing them. And this is a proven fact. I've seen it several times. If they can't periscope and stand up at least part of their body with where they can look around and check things out, it stresses them the hell out. It really does. They keep bumping their heads and then they start going crazy and it stresses them. And then when they get too stressed, what happens? Just like crocodiles. They build up shit in their bodies and it kills them. It's just not good for them. So, and keeping Bushmasters is a whole different animal. Breeding Bushmasters is a whole different than other snakes. It's completely different. It just, things we do to breed Bushmasters is completely opposite of what you would think. But I'm going to tell you, shed skins, humidity, airflow, 
air quality, all important facts would keep them with cheeses. So we have to alter their and mimic their conditions indoors. And that's the secret to it, is keeping their conditions right to keep them happy. Enough space, feeding them, keeping them clean. Bushmasters will not tolerate a dirty cage. I can tell if one of our Bushmasters has defecated in his hide box. Because he'll be at the other end of the cage all day. He won't go in that box. Look under there, he's defecated in the box. If they've defecated in their cage, even the large cages, they're constantly roaming and prodding and trying to figure out how to get away from it. They will not tolerate it, and they don't do good with it. If they sit in any kind of feces for a period of time, it gets them sick. They're just a delicate animal. For as big and as powerful and as bad as they are, they're delicate. They're delicate, and they get sick easy. But on the other hand, if you get the rhythm right and you're keeping them right, you'll get things happening and you'll notice a happier snake, a happier Bushmaster. You'll notice clean sheds, better feeding responses. And I was talking about feeding them and handling them. I cool off everything. I cool off my hands. I cool off the end of my hook. I cool off everything. Feeding them, I use, I use these right here. I use these. This is how I feed our big seven, eight foot Bushmasters. But these literally are stuck in the sink and cold water run on them. My rat is at perfect temperature. It's at temperature where it's hotter than my body and everything else. And I don't get them mistakes where that snake's blown by the tongs and trying to hit me or trying to hit a different object. And the rats are definitely always dried off because if that rat's hot and dripping water, I've seen Bushmaster babies read right on a water droplet that hit the paper and strike that instead of the rat. I mean, because that's what it picked up on first. So I keep everything cool. Everything cool to the touch except my food item. So that's what I use. I use this right here to feed the biggest, baddest pit viper on earth. But I am confident in what I do because I've been doing this a long time. I've been working with Lachesis a lot longer than you can ever imagine. I've been doing them for a long time. And I understand this snake. And it's just the whole thing of learning that animal's habits and what it likes and what it don't, what works and what don't. And I know there's a lot of new people keeping Lachesis out there. And they're doing fine. And that's great. But it's over the period of time. It may come on quickly. Most of the time, it takes several months. Then the snake will start showing signs of, I'm not doing good, I'm not happy. And then you start seeing the decline in its health. So, big cages, good air humidity, good humid. I mean, I'm sorry, good air quality, good humidity are key to keeping lachesis. But to the venom squad, I'm sorry I didn't do a feeding today, but... We have to throw some education in here for you guys too. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we're working on our video skills. And we've got some new equipment coming. So things are going to get better guys. Hang in there with me. But we've got some other Bushmasters we're going to show you eventually. We're getting ready for a larger facility. So we'll be able to pull some of the big bad stuff out. This is about as big as bad as it gets for this room. <laughs> this is the space we got to work with at the moment. So... Anyways, don't forget to like, hit the bell notification, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and come back because I've got a ton of cool stuff I want to show you all. And I want to bring you on this journey with me. I want to show you guys what I do and what drives me, my passion. For me, the love of snakes, it's almost a primal instinct. I hope you all like this little video today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And come on back to Venom Central. Willie from Venom Central, checking out. Later.